Hey everyone, welcome back. This is part two of my DIY digital audio player project. And so in this video, what I wanted to do was see if there was a measurable difference with using the Ian Canada number 20B top hat, also called the Transport Pi Digi uh, from Ian Canada, along with the SE Pure Clock upgrade. And so I wanted to see if this upgrade, which is the top hat with the pure SE Pure Clock, actually improved the objective test data uh, against simply using the Raspberry Pi uh, with the USB out of the Raspberry Pi to my DAC. And so today what we're doing is we're actually evaluating the Ian Canada Transport Pi Digi top hat to see if it offers uh, distortion improvements uh, in the audio signal okay and so if you're not familiar with my uh, DIY digital audio player project uh, put a link in the description of the previous video which kind of walks you through uh, what I uh, building this player up and so just a quick uh, rundown of what the player is it's the Raspberry Pi 4 running Volumio operating system which is a music playback software and so I have been looking at ways to improve my playback system and and trying to see if there's a way to measure the differences as I continue to upgrade the digital audio player hardware. And so the goal here is to, is hopefully there is a difference in the in the, the measurements and that should serve as a guiding light towards further upgrades down the road such as improved power supply, uh, different things like that. And so um, so there's uh, test A uh, is using the Ian Canada Transport Pi with the upgraded clock. Test B is simply using the Raspberry Pi on its own, uh, sending the audio out via USB to the SMSL D300 DAC. And so just to give you an overview here of the test setup, so this is the SMSL D300 DAC. And so this is the Raspberry Pi with the Ian Canada top hat. It sends the audio out via digital coax. You can see it running into the back of the DAC. And so that's test setup A. Test setup B is to evaluate um, the Raspberry Pi on its own without the Ian Canada 20B top hat. And so it's going to send audio out via USB uh, to, to the DAC. So we're using the DAC in both test setups, uh, but with the Raspberry Pi on its own, it's sending out via USB into the back, uh, into the USB input on the DAC. Okay, and so you can see here this cable, this is the XLR audio analog out of the DAC, and then it's going analog in to the E1DA ADC, so analog digital converter. This is what's actually analyzing the audio signal coming out of the DAC. And so it's sending that via digital USB to my laptop, and then the laptop has the Arta software. And so the Arta software is going to analyze the audio signal, and we're going to do a distortion comparison uh, between the two test setups. Now you may be wondering how on earth am I actually sending the test signal through the Raspberry Pi? So I'm not actually sending the audio to the Raspberry Pi. Arta actually has, the Arta measurement software has a nice feature where you're able to save wave files to a disk. Uh, and so I saved various test audio test signals as wave files to a USB thumb drive. I then put the thumb drive into the Raspberry Pi and then using the Volumio playback software, I played those files back and then analyze the audio signal in real time using the Arta software. So I hope that's clear, um, but let's get started. So test A is using the Ian Canada Transport top hat. And so for that, we need to activate the IS2 output on the Raspberry Pi. And then we need to switch uh, the DAC model to the Digi Plus Pro. Um, and then this turns on the Ian Canada top hat. And so the first test signal that I decided to go with was a two-tone test signal using a 60 hertz and 7 kilohertz sine wave uh, using a 4 to 1 power ratio. And so you can see here uh, we have 120 dB of dynamic range. And so 
very very uh, low noise floor using the E1DA ADC and so uh, this is with the EN Canada Transport Pi Digi S with the SC Pure Clock upgrade so you can see here we have virtually no sidebands being generated from the uh, fundamental test tone there coming in and so the next uh, thing is to look at the result uh, with just simply running USB out of the Raspberry Pi bypassing the Ian Canada transport and then seeing if that uh, makes the distortion worse and so you can see here um, distortion is virtually unchanged uh, the results are completely identical uh, between the two uh, test setups that we're doing the next uh, test signal that I decided to go with was a multi-tone uh, multi-band test signal which is 12 tones per octave you can see it here and so uh, playing this back as a WAV file from the attached thumb drive uh, generates this on my Arda spectrum analyzer so you can see we have 92 dB of dynamic range it's nearly filling the 100 dB vertical scale that I have set up in Arda and so um, looking at what happens when we simply run USB out instead of the uh, Ian Canada top hat, we can see here uh, just comparing the two, there's virtually no difference uh, in distortion performance. So conclusion on this is, as you can clearly see, there's no measurable distortion difference when upgrading to the Ian Canada top hat number 20B uh, transport Pi with the SE Pure Clock. Uh, compared to the direct USB connection between the Raspberry Pi and my uh, D300 DAC. So I was hoping that there would be a measurable difference in performance so that I could continue to look at uh, further upgrades to my music streamer, uh, but this does not seem to keep be the case. Um, if there are measurable differences to the upgrade, then they're not revealed in this particular type of test signal or this type of test setup. So it's uh, it's my opinion that the upgrade does offer a subjective improvement in sound quality. However, uh, confirming this through measurement uh, simply eludes me. Was the test of any value? Um, it's important to determine what doesn't work uh, so that I can continue to think about what may work as a measurement setup and perhaps different test signal. Um, so that's something that I'll continue to look at. So uh, some may be cynical and simply tell me to listen with my ears, uh, but I'll point out that nobody is measuring uh, streamer performance, especially when it comes to playback performance from local storage. So if I can establish, establish a test metric uh, that reveals sonic differences, then it might be a path towards, um, you know, a, like I mentioned before, greater uh, being able to have a guiding light towards what hardware upgrades are actually making a difference in an objective sense um, and towards the goal of greater sonic purity. So uh, that concludes my video for today. Take care and have a great day.